All right. So I'm going to talk about how to create professional graphics in a very simple and convenient way. Um, and first, I just want to start with the premise that that basically, you know, if it if your manuals just consist of text and walls of text, long walls of text, it can put readers off. It's not inviting, you know, their eyes are jumping towards images or things that are visual. And so we, we know this, right? We know that cool graphics really can help user guides come alive. Uh, I used to work at a place where um, whiteboards were the thing. The, one of the product managers believed so strongly in whiteboards that she ordered a bunch of extra ones uh, so that everybody could have like a whiteboard in their area because she noticed that when people tried to explain a complicated concept, they invariably drew it out on the whiteboard. And you'll see engineers do this in almost every IT shop, right? Something's confusing, let's draw it out. And yeah, they're just drawing boxes, arrows, simple little things, but it's enough to try to help people understand, right? It's much harder to try to explain something complicated if you can't leverage any kind of drawing to do it, right? If you're just using text, you're actually taking away some of your, some of your communicative tools. But of course, the problem is that we're not artists, right? We can't sit down and create the Mona Lisa of graphics. And so we tend to just say, look, there's not enough bandwidth, or we're, we're maybe going to be translating this, so graphics aren't going to work for us, or um, we don't have the resources allocated for this. You know, there's lots of excuses. But I think the main reason we don't create graphics, and by graphics, I'm usually, I'm mostly talking about conceptual illustrations, diagrams. I'm not really talking about screenshots, which we, we can all do, right? Um, so how do you get around this problem of uh, the fact that we're not graphic designers, but we need to have compelling graphics in our guides? Well, I think there are three kind of principles, or three steps. One, embrace minimalism, right? You don't have to draw something that looks incredibly sophisticated. Um, you can you can communicate a concept with simple arrows, boxes, very minimalistic shapes. And this actually has some research behind it. Um, a couple of authors in a book on e-learning, they did some tests and they said, you know, which is more, which is a better graphic? The top one that's a photograph reproduces all kinds of detail or the bottom one, which is just a simple line drawing. And they found that for users that are in a hurry, that are, that are pressed for time, they like the line drawing, the simpler one, because it allowed them to focus on the parts that matter, right? They're not distracted by all of these uh, extraneous parts and detail. You know, what is this? What's that? No, it goes right to the center of it. So if you create minimalistic graphics, you know, you can A, make it a lot easier on yourself and B, increase the effectiveness of your art. Now, step two, I recommend using something called the noun project. Uh, raise your hand if you've ever heard of this thing. This is an attempt by a group um, to create a visual language. So every, every abstract concept, process, complexity, uh, you know, machine, they want to represent it with some kind of pictogram that speaks universally to people. And so this is an amazing set of icons. And of course, we've, we've heard of clip art and icon galleries, but what makes this unique that these are all vectors. And uh, so that means you can download it and you can manipulate it in a vector graphics program like Illustrator. You can change stuff, right? Because you always have to tweak things. You want to flip it around. You want to change, move an arm, right? You can do that because they're vector graphics. You download this app. It, the subscription is, is trivial. It's trivial. It's like $10 a month for this thing. Uh, for unlimited access, n no need to credit anybody once you're a subscriber. Uh, but you can actually just drag it from the, the local app into your, your graphics program. Now, once you start building graphics, you can reuse those. So if you've got a server, for example, which I've shown in blue, uh, you you've now have, have decided on what represents server, so use that in your subsequent graphics. You know, and as you create more graphics, you can leverage this huge library of graphics that you've already made, and soon you've got a database and a machine and an API, and you've just got these different components that you can pull together and easily assemble a diagram. And, and the diagrams, sure, they look simple, 
but they usually communicate enough to help users understand. And that's it.